Before we get into today's video, I just want to let you guys know about a few things. First of all, I hope you guys had an amazing Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I know I did. 2022 was by far the best year of my poker career thus far. I played the highest stakes I've ever played, won the biggest pots I've ever won, lost the biggest session I've ever had, and I also got to play in the WSOP $10,000 main event. I also got second place in a Run Good Series ring event and had my second best tournament score to date. We are just getting started. 2023 is going to be absolutely amazing. So before we get started, just a few things to let you guys know about. If you didn't know already, I have a second channel called Ashley Frank Vlogs. It's pretty much everything off the felt. So where I eat, where I like to hang out, and all these fun things I get to do outside of the poker tables. Secondly, I have a Discord channel where we talk about everything from hand histories to cooking to tournament schedules. So click the link below to check out the Discord. Also on Instagram is where you can follow me every Every single day I post live stories and updates so it's at pokerface underscore ash there's even an option to subscribe for five bucks a month and I give you guys all the behind the scenes stuff you guys get to see stories and footage you even get first dibs on my staking events whenever I put action on stake kings if you subscribe on Instagram if you become a member on YouTube you also get the same perks as well so make sure you guys check that out also, I have a website, PokerFaceSash.com, where you guys can check out my merch. I have hats, hoodies, beanies, and so much more. I even just released the It's Only Up From Here AirPods case, so make sure you guys check it out. I also have a Frequently Asked Questions section where you can hear my thoughts on how to build a bankroll, how to become a poker pro, and so much more. You can also find every single podcast I've been on and things like that. You can also subscribe to my monthly newsletter. I promise I will not spam you guys. It's a once a month summary on what I've got going on. Lastly, if you're a video game nerd like me, I actually have a video game channel as well. It's Game Face Ash on Instagram and Game Face Ash on Twitch. So if you're into video games and like watching streamers and stuff, you can watch me play on there. I'll stream occasionally when I have time. And on Instagram, I'll post highlights and reels of my gaming. Finally, with the new year here, I'm probably not the only one that's thinking about getting better at poker in 2023. And in order to get better at anything, you need to learn some new skills and then be able to practice them. You probably remember me telling you last month about Steve's No Bull Poker course. This $397 course has no bull, no jargon, no useless charts to memorize, and I can't believe he's doing this, but he's gonna give it to you for free if you sign up for one year of advanced poker training, which is the perfect place to practice all the new skills you'll be learning. There are 30 lessons and I'm going to try to get through one each week. If you'd like to join me, use the link here, enter my offer code PokerFaceAsh and you'll see here it indicates you're getting the No Bull Poker course for free. Just don't wait because honestly I don't know how much longer he will be running this New Year's promotion so make sure you guys check it out. Alright, today I have my top 10 poker hands of 2022. Let's get into it and while you guys are watching this I'm working tirelessly on completing a whole month's worth of vlogs so we have a ton of content coming up. All right, enjoy and I'll see you guys later. In this hand, there's a bunch of limps ahead of me and I'm the cutoff with five deuce suited. I'm playing on a live stream. Let's get in the mix. I make the call. Carrie then raises the button with ace eight offsuit to $20. Dusty calls in the big blind, Dory, Action Ashley, and I decide to peel here. So we're gonna go five ways to a flop. The flop is king three four with one diamond. Probably just about as good of a board I could hope for with my exact hand without flopping the nuts, of course. We all check it over to the pre-flop raiser, which was carry on the button, and she decides to check, so we're heading to a turn card. The turn is the nine of hearts. Dusty decides to bet $65. Everyone else folds, and now it's on me. It's very hard for Dusty to have a nutted hand here unless she has exactly a set of threes or fours. Kings would have raised pre-flop. She could have a hand like king queen or a hand like ace nine, something like that that she wants to start denying equity with. I have five high, so I'm gonna put in the raise. Is gonna make oh she's gonna make the raise here now she's got fold equity along with her real equity so I like this play a lot from Poker Face Ash. Especially against a hand like Dusty has. It's going to be hard for Dusty to continue here. Dusty thinks for a while she does not want to let her hand go, but shout out to Dusty. We battled a lot this summer at the WSOP and a lot of ladies events this summer. She's a very good and sticky player, but luckily I was able to get this one through on her and finally pick up a nice pot on this live stream. Nice job, Poker Face Ash. Yeah, take that nice pot there with a five high. Making a great decision there with her two five by making the raise. 
just about a few hands later, there's a limp under the gun, and Joey raises to $13 with 10 nine of hearts in the cutoff, and I'm on the button and look down at another premium, pocket queens. I three bet to 45. Folds back around to Joey, and he puts in the four bet to $125. By the way, this game was gonna become uncapped, but to make it fair for the Joes who weren't prepared to play the one-two game today, everybody started with $300. So in this hand, we are about 400 effective. And given the stack sizes in this hand, I think the only play here to deny equity against ace-king, ace-queen type hands is to just go all in. He makes the call, so I'm all in, headed to see five cards. The flop looks great, the turn gives a little bit of a sweat because he turns an open ender, but the river pairs the board and I scoop and double up through Joey. So in this hand, I play a hand against Andrew, one of the most studied players I personally know and I really respect his game. In this hand, I look down at the beautiful ace queen of hearts under the gun and I raised it to $10. Andrew calls in the low jack, the high jack also calls, so we're going three ways to a flop of ace, queen, eight. We flop Jin, top two pair. I bet $10 as I would with most of my range on this board. We have major range advantage here. Only Andrew makes the call, so we're headed two ways to a turn card. As if this hand couldn't get any better for us, we turn the nut full house with the ace of clubs. I have this board and this hand absolutely locked up as there's virtually nothing I can lose to. I know a little bit about Andrew's game and I respect his play a lot, but I know if I check to him, he's gonna start bluffing with a lot of his hands and if he has an ace, he's gonna bet. If he somehow shows up with a backdoor flush draw, he's gonna start barreling as well. He's not afraid to bluff. So I check it over to him, hoping he'll start putting money in the pot and indeed he does with a bet of $20. Nothing to do here except make the call. I don't want to force his bluffs out and if he is semi-bluffing, I want him to get there on the river. So we head to a river card, which is the five of clubs. So now the backdoor flush does come in. In these spots in the past, I would just bet here, but I have to think about my opponent's range and if he's bluffing, he's going to continue to do so. If he has a value hand like a worse ace than me, he's going to bet as well. And if he backed up into a flush or somehow has pocket eights for a worse full house, pocket queens or pocket fives, or if he has has ace five, he's gonna continue betting. So I check the stone nuts over to him and I'm relieved to see him put out a bet of $55. Here's where I think I make a bit of a mistake. We're obviously raising, but in hindsight, I think I could have gone much bigger or even polarized and jammed the river here. If he has an ace, he's probably gonna make a crying call. If he has a worse full house, he's snapping us off. And if he has a flush, he's certainly gonna have to think about it. So I decided on a raise size of $150, knowing he's a very competent player and he can also get away from a lot of hands. So I raise to $150 and here's what happened. Oh my god, I have a flush! I knew you had a flush! What are you doing? Oh my god, that's actually very well played. Nice hand. Thanks Andrew, that means a lot coming from you. And I'm not being sarcastic. <laughs> It was a big compliment coming from Andrew telling me that I played the hand well, and I honestly was very proud of myself for playing the hand this way. And overall, a very fun hand. Andrew took it like a champ, and we ended up scooping a very, very nice pot. In this hand, there's a limp from under the gun too, and I'm in middle position and look down at pocket tens and I raised to $25. Only the original limper calls, so we're going heads up to a flop. The flop comes three, eight, six with two hearts, so this is a very good flop for our hand having pocket tens. My opponent checks it over to me, and I know this isn't a board that we're gonna be down betting our entire range on, so we have to be selective with what hands we're gonna bet on this type of texture. This flop will generally bring a lot of draws for my opponent, and while I think it's close, I think I still have a slight nut advantage having all the over pairs where my opponent really can't have, but he definitely could have limp called with a lot of hands like pocket sixes, eights, or threes, but the way I play, I can also have those hands because I'm never 
limping preflop, I'm always putting in a raise. So with pocket tens here, this is definitely a hand that needs protection. I know we're gonna have some checkbacks on our range and actually after looking at the solver, it looks like we should be checking black tens here about 75% of the time. But here's the thing, if we are gonna bet, as you can see, we want to bet a little bit bigger like half pot or more. So since I knew this was a board we weren't gonna always be betting, it's important to know that we should be betting a little bit bigger on these types of boards. So I go for a bet size of $35. Then I'm not super surprised to see a check raise from my opponent to 85. I think my opponent can be check raising some draws in this spot. However, given my quick assessment of my opponent, I think he is pretty straightforward. However, we still have an overpair to this board. I'm not gonna give up just yet being in position. So I make the call and we head to a turn card. The turn is a pretty sweet card. It is a 10, but it is the 10 of hearts bringing in the heart flush. Now my opponent leads into me for a hundred dollars. And at this point, the question is how many flushes does my opponent have? And how often does he check raise his draws like nine, seven suited and his flush draws? I think in a vacuum at lower stakes, players don't check raise draws enough. So I wasn't super worried about a flush. I think in this player pool, players aren't balanced enough and they're really gonna be calling a lot of their draws, especially being out of position. So at this point, I wanna try and get all the money in. I don't want another heart to fall on the river and then slow my opponent down if he happens to have a set or two pair or possibly a weird slow played over pair like jacks. So let's get it in. I essentially go all in for my opponent's entire stack, which he had about $300 behind at this point. He started the hand with around five. He slowly pushes in his chips and then says, I have a set. And I was absolutely floored. My opponent had pocket eights and I knew he was drawing to just one out. We head to a river card, it's clean. And in my first playable hand, we felt our opponent and now add another $500 to our stack. A great start. In this hand, we play the biggest pot of the night. I look down in early position at pocket aces. There's a button straddle to 10, and the way it works here is unless there's two raises before the button, the button gets to act last. Right as the dealer said there was a $10 button straddle, I was getting ready to put out my raise of 20, so I accidentally min raised. There was four callers, and then it's back on the button, and now he has the choice between calling, raising, or folding. He chooses to raise to $120. I'm jumping for joy at this point. I hope he has a big hand. I don't know much about him, but he seems like a pretty tight and straightforward player, so I'm hoping he has a monster. There's absolutely no reason to slow play my hand out of position with many players to act after me, so I put in the 4 bet to $400. Folds back around to the button, he makes the call, so now we're going heads up in a huge pot. And in this hand, we're about $2,000 effective. The flop is jack 7 5 with two hearts. We do have the ace of hearts in our hand. I don't love seeing the jack as it seems like he could definitely have pocket jacks in this spot, but if we're getting cooler, then we're getting cooler. The pot is a little over 800, so I down bet to $315. Before I can barely even get all my chips out, he says, I'm all in. I didn't come all this way to fold aces on this jack high flop, so I quickly put in the call. We decide to run it twice, and here's what happened. So on the first board, he catches a king for two pair, which is so heartbreaking. We also have to fade a heart on the second board, and this is a major sweat for a huge $4,000 pot. And thankfully, we end up chopping it up because we lost the first board. So a little bit anticlimactic, but luckily we don't lose our whole stack on this pot when our opponent flops a monster draw. All right, I hope you guys are ready for the funnest hand of the stream for me. There's the $25 straddle on, so it's 5, 5, 10, 10, 25, and it folds to me in the cutoff, and I look down at 7, 8 of hearts. Really beautiful hand. It folds around to Cam, and he decides to put in a 3 bet to $300. Cam is a very solid player. I know he's extremely capable. While he can have nutted hands here, he can also have hands just like he has in this spot with the Jack offsuit. So I think my hand still fares well in position post flop against his three bet range. So I'm gonna flat and head to a flop. By the way, Cam commentated on a vlog that's coming out next week in one of the sickest hands and the biggest hero call spot I've ever been in in my life. So stay tuned next week. You're not going to want to miss that vlog. And Cam did an incredible job commentating on the TCH Austin live stream. The flop is a pretty interesting one. It's 996 with one heart. 
So we've locked ourselves an open ender and a backdoor flush drop. Cam has me covered and on this type of board, it's a very monotone, not very connected board. And I know he's gonna put in a bet, but he does go a little bit on the larger side and puts out a continuation bet of $300. I decided the best play here would be to flat. I don't love that the board is paired, although I don't think it's gonna hurt the situation too much. So I make the call planning to do some things if the turn is a heart. And depending on what Cam does on the turn, we might be able to make a move here and get it through and get all of his worst hands, his bluffs, his ace highs to fold. Well, the poker gods heard my plans because they put out the queen of hearts. Cam puts out a pretty chunky bet of $700. Now the action's on me and I need to count my stack and figure out exactly how much I have behind. I needed to know if I shove here, if I can get a lot of his hands to fold. Obviously he's not gonna fold aces, kings, and if he has queens, well, rest in peace to my stack. I thought for quite a while before coming to the conclusion of even if he has an over pair, I'm still gonna be in pretty good shape against those with my open ender and my flush draw, hoping that he doesn't have hearts, of course. Besides, I have eight high at this point. So this is a perfect hand to turn into a semi-bluff, try to get his hands to fold. Cameron trying to make something happen here. Ash, combo draw, open-ended with the flush draw, going nowhere. The wager is $700, but it's king high versus eight high. So if a brick falls on the river, we could have quite the interesting hand developing here. Poker face Ash here counting up her stack, only has about 2,000 behind, so she might just even rip it right now. So let's stick it in. Let's go all in for $2,000. Thankfully, Cam can't do much here with this king high. He does have a gut shot, so he did ask for a count, but it was just too much for him to continue in this spot. So we take down a very sizable pot with the eight seven of hearts and got my first turn bluff, semi bluff shove through at higher stakes. And man, it felt freaking good. Alright guys, you're about to witness one of the biggest pots I've ever played and ironically enough, it's in a PLO double board bomb pot and ironically yet again, it's also against the villain of the night, which is Andrew. So because I usually steer clear of these hands, I wasn't even filming it because I was getting a massage and I honestly didn't think I'd be playing a huge hand, but I get dealt king, queen, queen, nine, and the first board is queen, ace, seven, and the second board is king, three, deuce. Unless someone has aces, I'm good on the first board and have middle set. Someone puts out a pot bet of $80 and I decide to make the call. And if someone else raised, I was gonna repot, but I make the call for 80. Another player calls the 80 and Andrew calls the 80. So we're going four ways to a turn card. The turn on the top board is an eight and the turn on the bottom board is the case queen. So now I have middle set on both boards. No straights, no flushes. This is an absolute dream spot. It checks over to Andrew and he pots it for around three hundred dollars everyone else folds and now it's back on me there is a flush draw available now on the second board and it's time to get all the money in i don't want any cards to come on the river that might discourage him from putting more money in the pot and i have middle set on both boards let's get all the money in so i shove for about 1200 which effectively puts him all in for the rest of his chips if he makes the call he tanks and tanks for a very very long time rightfully so he has a tough decision he's wondering if he's good on one board but i know after him tanking he is probably drawing near dead after a lot of contemplation he's like i don't think i can fold this i call and he flips over a set of sevens on the top board and on the bottom board i don't think he had much so i scoop an absolute monster pot here in one of our very last hands of this crazy action home game that i had an absolute blast in So I know I've told you guys to buckle up many times in the past, but this time you're gonna need to buckle up and latch the safety strap because this is the biggest pot I've ever played in my life and probably one of the craziest situations I've ever been in. As you can see, this was a 5, 5, 10, 25, 50, 100, 200, 400 straddle pot. That's right, you heard me right, 200 to 400. And now I'm first to act on the button and I look down at Ace King offsuit. We are so deep here, open ripping just seemed so scary. I wasn't sure what to do, so I decided to raise to 1500. It folds around the school bus and because of the blind amounts, he essentially has about five to six big blinds behind. So he probably thought if he's 60, 40, it's a good price for him to get it in, which he was actually correct. Even though he has queen eight offsuit, you kind of have to look at it as he had six big blinds and queen high. He decides to shove all in, 
I snap call for the biggest pot of my entire life, and this is what happened. It's big slick oh down. Oh oh, big sweat, big sweat. Oh my God. 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 School bus oh, has God. live cards here that's with the queen. Cool. Hey, I'm going to pull the queen. It's the last hand. We're going for it. Ash got the glasses? No. This is the last hand in the stream. Right away, no questions. So, Poker Face Ash fans, on your feet. Oh, oh, it is. Is. How about a How about a How about a And you got a power. Yeah, that's good. Queen. Oh, she milky this is a little swag. Give her a minute. Give her a minute. Give her a minute. Give her a I was praying for an ace on the flop to calm my nerves and just get the hand over with and the poker gods heard my cries and my prayers as we flop an ace and pretty much almost flop him dead. Thank goodness the ace came because he did hit an eight on the river. So we scoop a $5,700 pot, the biggest pot I have ever played. And what an end to this stream. Not only did I crawl out of my hole, but I managed to book a nice profit in the biggest game I've ever played in my life. Phew. $5 straddle on and I look down at pocket kings. I raise to 175 and pick up three collars. So we go four ways to a flop. I'm praying for a decent flop. Now knowing my opponents at this stage in the night, I know they're very loose, have very wide ranges and pocket kings is gonna fare very well against all of their ranges. The flop is four, eight, six rainbow. Not the absolute worst flop in the world, but not the best as we have a lot of loose players in this hand. So remember what I said earlier about keeping notes on eBay Dave leading on these types of boards? Well, he does it again and this time eBay Dave decides to bet $600. This is a pretty big bet into multiple players. Seat one decides to make the call with his gut shot and now I have a decision. While I think my hand is way ahead at this point, there can be some really terrible turn cards. So I decided in the moment that I would call and then get it all in on the turn if it was a reasonable card. The turn is an extremely interesting card. It is another eight and it brings in the club flush draw. Now this is where things get a little bit fishy. eBay Dave decides to check now. Seat one checks as well and now it's on me. Like I said, I think my hand is the best hand at this point. I don't think eBay Dave slows down if he hits trips here. He knows I probably have a pretty strong hand because I've been very tight all night. So I wanna go with my read, go with my gut, go with what I've been observing all night from my opponents. I decided to bet $1,400. eBay Dave does something that I'm not surprised that he did, but at the same time, it was a little nerve wracking. He snap shoves all in. Seat one folds and now it's back on me. eBay Dave is repping pocket sixes, pocket fours, eight six or eight four, four five seven for a straight. Like I said, eBay Dave is the kind of player where if he has a very, very strong hand, he's gonna continue betting. I don't see him checking an eight. I have a huge decision on my hand. If I call here and I'm wrong, I am almost dead against any nutted hand he has. So now I have to think about what kind of bluffs he could have in this spot. So he can definitely have an open ender. He can just have like a gut shot with a seven, maybe like four, five, four, six, four that he wants to turn into a bluff, five, six, six, seven, any of those hands I could see him doing something with. Also, he could have a hand like pretty much any suited club hand at this point, like ace four of clubs he might do this with because again, he's very aggressive and capable. He's definitely put me in a very tough spot. If I make this call, it's for the biggest pot I've ever played. And if I'm wrong, then I'm really wrong. But after I had noticed how much was in the pot, how much was in my stack, and how much I had already invested, I realized I can't fold. Here's what happened. He's got outs on this river as well. So she hasn't faded it if she makes the call. She does make the call. Nice call, Ash. She's 83% to win. Can she dodge it? So it's time to put in my chips. I grab them and slowly put them in the middle, put my head down and hope I made the right decision. eBay Dave did something that kind of gave me a tell on the strength of his hand. I hadn't heard him ask to run it more than once all night. Maybe he was just being nice and giving me the option, but my gut feeling said he wanted to run it more than once because he knew he was way behind and he had a draw. So going with that read, normally I would like to run it twice, especially in the biggest pot I've ever played, but because I got the read that he was probably drawing, I said once, she says, 
and she dodges it. 10K pot for Poker Face Ash was just like we talked about, that one spot, that one hand. Yeah, and that's the one hand for Poker Face Ash, yeah, 10K and they, pot. They didn't make it easy on her. You no. know, she really, she played that really well. For those Poker Face Ash fans in the chat, finally a big pot for Ashley tonight. 10K pot headed her way. He's been folding and folding, waiting for her spot. Had to fold the winner a few times. Uh, to, you know, some, pretty, some pretty serious aggression and made the call here was correct, and it's up piles now. It's got to be one of the bigger pots he's ever won, too. That one's making the block. <laughs> oh, 100%, yeah. All right, everybody, buckle up. This is not only one of the funnest hands I've ever played in my life, but it's also one of the biggest highlights in my short poker career thus far, so I hope you guys enjoy this one. It folds around to Rob in the small blind with the 5-5-10 straddle on, and he raises to $60. I'm essentially in a small blind situation right here, and I look down at pocket sixes. While we can certainly flat this hand, it also functions, as you can see, as a very low frequency three bet. It's a hand that plays pretty poorly post-flop unless we flop exactly a set and will mostly be downgraded to the bottom of our range on a lot of board textures. So I was hoping we could use our positional advantage in this one. So I would love to raise this one up here and use a bigger sizing and hopefully get Rob to fold a lot of his junk and just take this down pre-flop. I know Rob is sticky, but I also know he's gonna be raising a pretty wide range so we can get a lot of his crap hands to fold. William folds his straddle and now it's back on Rob and he makes the call. So now we're gonna go heads up in this three bet pot. The flop is jack 9-4 with two hearts, so this is a pretty neutral board range advantage wise. We're both gonna flop some stuff on this board. While Rob doesn't always have to flop a pair here, he is gonna have a lot of straightening possibilities and some flush draws. I do block hearts with my six of hearts, and this is a board that's pretty dynamic. So when he checks it over to me, I'm not gonna use a small sizing on this board. I'm gonna use a little bit of a larger size. So I go for almost half pot and make it $225. Rob makes the call. So now we head to a turn card and here's where things get very, interesting. The turn is the jack of clubs, so now the top card pairs. I know a lot of you have been dying to hear my thoughts on this hand, so I'm going to try my best to explain what I was thinking about during the hand. I don't think this is a terrible bet by Rob, although in a vacuum this line doesn't make too much sense because if you have a jack, you would normally want to check and have me continue betting, but the flip side of that is he knows that when the top card pairs, I'm going to have a hard time repping this card, so I'm going to check back a lot. So if he does have a hand he wants to start getting value from, it is a nice spot to start leading. So Rob bets $350. There was many things running through my mind at this point, and one of them was just shipping it in right here, thinking that my hand is just good a lot of the time. The thing about my opponent is Rob is one of the most well-balanced and studied poker players I know, so I know he's so capable of bluffing, and I know he's going to have a lot of bluffs specifically that go around the jack and the nine. Although I don't know his exact hand, I thought he would have a lot of bluffs in this spot, start leading with hands like king-queen, maybe ace-high or king-high flush draws that want to start putting my ace-highs in a tough spot, so I'm not believing him just yet. The only problem with flatting here is there's not very many good river cards I'm gonna love to see. I'm gonna pretty much hate to see any card above a seven. The only card I might not hate to see is another jack to be honest with you. So I know if I flat here I'm gonna have a very rough river decision. But you know what? I came to put my big girl pants on today so I decide to flat and see what happens on the river. And here's what happens. So the river is the seven of diamonds and you can see me smiling because I just knew he was going to put me to the ultimate test in this spot. Oh man. Yeah, he's gonna put her to the test and here it is. I love hero calls. I am sort of rooting for a hero call here. I love when people put the cape on, take it to the streets and this would be quite the hero. Rob's river bet sizing is polarized, meaning he's repping a monster or nothing at all. So he's repping a jack, a full house with pocket nines or fours, jack nine, ten eight, or sevens full. So as you can see, I take a lot of time with this one. I'm not convinced that I'm beat. My spidey senses are going off. Again, I know Rob is such a capable player, so he can have so many bluffs in this spot. He can turn a hand like queen 10 to a bluff, king queen, a 10x combination blocking the nut straight. And he can also have some missed heart draws, although I didn't know if his heart draws would start leading the turn. So this hand was a bit confusing. I wasn't sure what to make of it, but you know what? Mama didn't raise no quitter. I'm not here to fold fourth pair. So let's stick it in and make the call. Hall, and here's what happened. There we go. Hero call. Oh, 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 oh. My 
spidey senses were right and I make the best hero call calling with fourth pair in the spot where I'm at risk for all of my chips on the river and man that one felt amazing and the table's reaction just made it feel that much better. Shout out to Texas Rob, he was such a good sport about it. We actually ended up all going out afterwards and he was kind enough to tell me his thoughts. He said he thought he could get me to fold a lot of my ace king and ace queen type hands. Shout out to Rob for trying to pull off the bluff and honestly most of the time it should have worked but I'm happy I picked it off and won a very very nice pot and one of the biggest pots of the session. I hope you guys enjoyed the top 10 poker hands of 2023. As you can see, we've come so far, even from just a year ago. So you guys can look forward to some amazing poker this year, some amazing tournament stops, cash games, and I'm actually gonna start doing tournament poker vlogs again. So stay tuned. Anyway, if you guys enjoy the vlog, would you do me a huge favor and go all in and like, comment, and subscribe? It would mean the world to me. We are just getting started on this crazy freaking journey. It's only up from here. I'll see you guys next time.